In English, we have a word. It's called a bully. Someone who likes to be first. Never last. They don't want to be the servant. They want to be the boss. They want to push people around. Either with their physical strength and the threat that comes from that or with the power of their position in their job. Obviously our gospel tells us today you don't want to be a bully. Jesus is telling his servants to be the opposite. Then they will receive a reward in eternity. Now, our first reading is from the Book of Wisdom. And that's only in the Catholic Bible. The Protestant Bibles don't have it because Father Martin Luther, the founder of the Protestant religion, removed uh, several books from the Old Testament because he didn't like the reference to purgatory. So they can say, Purgatory is not in the Bible. And as Catholics, we can say, well, it's in my Bible. The book of Maccabees says it is a holy and wholesome thing to pray for the dead so that they can be freed from their sins. And even though he removed that book, it was still a belief of the Jews. They believed in a midway place between heaven and hell, where you could be purified. After all, where does our faith come from? The Jews. Jesus was a Jew. Mary and the apostles, all Jews. Jesus, the King of the Jews. The Jews believed in purgatory. So besides losing out on that, there are some beautiful passages in the Book of Wisdom. Now, someone asked me uh, at the other Mass, is this a prophecy for Jesus? I said, of course it is. I wish we had more from this chapter. I suggest you read it at home. And they said, well, wisdom is not a prophetic book. That's true. Like Isaiah and Jeremiah. Those books are primarily books of prophecy. But you know what? It's not just prophecy. They have wise sayings and spiritual insights. So the book of wisdom is like the book of Proverbs. It's primarily uh, wise sayings. But it also has prophecies. There are prophecies sprinkled all through the Old Testament. Hay 
Genesis chapter 3, the first prophecy. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Prophesies the coming of the Blessed Mother and of Jesus. And the ultimate victory over the serpent. But this is really an interesting passage. Because it gives us insight into the inner thoughts of the Pharisees. And they're going to bully Jesus. Because they had a problem. In their heart was evil. Pride and selfishness. The opposite of humility and kindness and generosity. So when we read this, it says, let us. So that's the thinking of the whole group of evil men who condemned Jesus to death. Let us beset the just one because he is obnoxious to us. They find Jesus obnoxious. Why is that? As we go on, it says, he's against what we do. He reproaches us for violating the law. So their response is to torture him. Let's see whether what he's saying is true. Now this shows you obviously it's Jesus. And keep in mind this is hundreds of years before Jesus is born. So this not only tells us about Jesus, but the evil reasoning behind those who murder him. So it says, if the just one be the son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hands of his foes. Let us test him with torture. Let's see if he will give us proof of his gentleness and patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death. So you have to realize this is true on several levels. So the first level is we see this is what's been happening to the prophets. Why did Cain kill his brother Abel? Because Abel was a good man and he offered the best to God. Cain didn't. He kept the best for himself and gave God what was second best, the junk. So Cain could have changed around. He could have said, you know what, I'll give God the best and be like Abel. But Abel was obnoxious to Cain. And so he beat him to death with a club. And the wood of the club is a foreshadowing of the wood of the cross. And Abel, who was a shepherd, is a symbol for Christ who says he is the good shepherd. Mm. 
Now this also happens to good people here and now. Do you know how ridiculous it is to see the little sisters of the poor being brought into court by the United States government so the US government is being a bully against these little holy nuns that take care of people because they are obnoxious to the government. The government wants to push abortion. And the sisters don't want to put that in their health care. Because it's not health care, it's death, death care, death I don't care. So when we try to do good, it aggravates evil people. They want to change us. Now, this is a small example, but when I was in the Air Force, a hundred years ago, <laughs> I was invited to a party. I thought, that's nice, I'll come to the party. Well, they kept trying to make me drink beer. I don't like beer. I don't want to like beer. But it was just driving them crazy. So my roommate said, get a beer, hold on to it so they leave you alone and I'll drink it at the end. So the worldly people want to change us. I mean the beer thing's a small example. I could give you others, but I don't want to get into more serious evil. So what happens to the servants of God and the prophets in the Old Testament? Also happens to Jesus and the apostles. And it's happening to us, to the church. People who follow Christ, especially in communist countries in the Middle East. are being tortured and threatened and put to death by the state and by militias, bullies. So as we look at our gospel today, <clears throat> Jesus even says, the Son of Man will be handed over to men. And they will kill him. And then uh, he will rise on the third day. So when Jesus rises from the dead, the bullies are in trouble. And when the bullies behind evil governments and in the world, people who beat up other people, some of whom wind up in jail for it, others may not get caught, they will stand in front of God. And it's not going to be good. Because if they have not repented, they may wind up down in hell with the original bully.
Matthew 25. One of the scariest lines in the Bible. Jesus says to the bullies, the evil men who abuse their power against the innocent, depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Why is that? Because they told God to depart from their life. Keep your humility to yourself, God. I want to do what I want to do. Nobody tells me what to do. I want to be loud and proud. I want to be in charge. So Jesus tells us in the gospel, if anyone wants to be first, he will be last. And the servant of all. So when we are disciples of Jesus, we go to the end of the line to let others ahead of us. We don't want to make people serve us. We want to serve them and be helpful. It's a big challenge. It goes against our nature. And that's what our second reading from James chapter 3 tells us. Where there is selfish ambition, there is disorder. Seek rather the wisdom from above, which is pure and peaceful, gentle and merciful. And then he goes on to say, where does the war among you come from? It's from the passion within you. So he points out that it starts inside. And that's where the war is. We have to watch out because we are naturally selfish. We have to deny ourselves, take up the cross and struggle to be good. We need to pray for grace and strength from God because it's easy to be evil. It's hard to be good. It's easy to be mean. But it's harder to be kind. It's easy to be selfish. But it's harder to engage in sacrificial love. So when we look at the cross, Jesus does practice what he preaches and fulfills what we see in Wisdom, chapter 2. It says, let us torture him that we may have proof of his gentleness and patience. So what does Jesus say from the cross? Wait till you guys show up in my kingdom. And I'm your judge, then you're in trouble. Does he threaten them? As he's being tortured by them? Jesus is the king of humility. He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
words of gentleness and patience, kindness and love. And that's where we need to be. With Jesus on the cross. Not with the bullies, the Pharisees, who stand before him as he's suffering and mock him. When I was in the hospital one time, I was in a lot of pain. And I was trying to find some consolation from God. So I started to think of myself like the good thief. The good thief was on the cross with Jesus. And he could turn his head to the side and see him. You can see it in the mural. And Jesus said to him, today you'll be with me in paradise. So I tried to uh, bear the suffering better by imagining Jesus suffering with me on the cross and remembering his promise of paradise to those who follow him, reminding me that the suffering was temporary. So when we look at our readings today, we see a connection, the connection of humility, patience and kindness, the example of the the saints and the prophets, and the ultimate example of Christ. Let us seek to imitate Christ always. Maybe you've heard that saying, what would Jesus do? And it's a good saying. You could also say, what would Mary do? So that will help guide us sometimes in decision-making. Because the imitation of Christ and the imitation of Mary is our ultimate examples of sacrificial love and kindness and mercy.